Coming up, Disney has announced a slew of live action remakes to their animated classics, and I'm going to give you my thoughts and opinions on what they've announced in this episode of DizPod. DizPop is brought to you by Dreams Unlimited Travel, experts at helping you plan the perfect vacation. Visit them on the web at dreamsunlimitedtravel.com. Well, hello, everybody, and welcome to the show. I am your host, Rhino Clavin, and today is going to be just a short little episode where we're going to be talking about some of the Disney Renaissance live action remake films that have been announced over the last two weeks or so. Um, It's gotten a little, I mean, you know, basically they're remaking every single animated film they've ever made. Um... I just wanted to do one of these episodes because I felt like we should get it out, talk about it now before it becomes old news. Um, Like, they probably already are old news at this point. I also wanted to put this out there specifically for some audio listeners because I feel like I've neglected you guys. The last three or four episodes of Dizpop have all been tutorials, and they've been so... Um, visual heavy um, that it would have been pointless to make them audio episodes. So for those of you who only listen on iTunes, I do thank you. You're missing out on some cool content on YouTube. However, I get it. You're in the car. That's when you listen to your podcast. Why are you going to sit and watch it on on YouTube? So I appreciate all audiences and um, so here you go. I'm not, I haven't forgotten about you. I just want you guys to remember that. Um, but like I said, we're talking about some of these live action Disney <sighs> renaissance, as they called. Sorry, my dog is having a... Uh, sometimes he jumps up on the couch and just starts rolling around and like playing with himself. He, it's like he's got a little imaginary friend over there. It's kind of cute. And he always seems to do it right when I go to start recording. Don't you, Artie? Yeah, he's giving me the side eye. Um, well, anyway, we're going to be talking about those Disney – Disney's currently in the what they're referring to as the Disney Renaissance, and it's basically like the last couple movies they made haven't sucked. So um, it's like a reemergence of classic animated films that are going to t- stand the test of time, so, um, animated live action whatnot. And uh, part of that is all these live action reimaginings of uh, Disney classics. And, you know, with like Cinderella um, – uh, Jungle Book, uh, you know, uh, uh, just a bunch of them. There's on the slate right now. There's supposedly a Cruella one with Emma Stone involved. There's um, uh, obviously Aladdin was just announced. Mulan, Lion King. Uh, I feel like I'm, I'm definitely for oh Beauty and the Beast. Duh, Beauty and the Beast. Emma Watson is as uh, uh, Belle, and now there's a rumor, or at least that's what somebody said to me the other day. This is just person to person rumor that that movie may get delayed because they're having trouble with the CGI in the movies that they can't get the beast to look as good as they want. Um, so honestly, I, I if they hold off for effects, that's fine with me. As long as you're making a better film, that's all I care about. From what I heard though, the, the, uh, the art that showed up um, that had to do with Mrs. Potts uh, that leaked online did not look well. It basically looked like it was a teapot and they just put like glued a face on it so that's not good um so it'll be weird this will be interesting because this is kind of the first um straight up i mean jungle book was kind of uh you know it it, the ending was a little different but that was pretty close to a remake um that involved some of the musical numbers and then again this is going to involve the musical numbers so we're in that trend where it's basically the live action and the animated are pretty close now instead of venturing off into other realms uh, like Maleficent, um, which supposedly is still getting a sequel, but I don't know. We'll see. Um, so anyway, let's get started. So I'm going to start with the oldest of these announced to the newest, I guess. Well, I'm just going to start with the older of the two. So The Lion King. Um, it was announced, um, you know, like Beauty and the Beast. Uh, this is going to include songs from the original animated film. Um this is, I think, all inspired after the success of The Jungle Book because of how good that looked and how well-received it was. Um, obviously, John Favreau has now been tapped to oversee it. It says he's directing it, but I didn't see a quote specifically from Disney that said directing. It just said this is his next project. Um, but as you know, he does produce a lot of films, so I'm not sure that he is, in the end, he will actually direct this or not. Um, I It, it seems... I, I'd be surprised, I guess, if he does this and Jungle Book 2 and not just, you know, um, sorry, it looked like I had something on my lip and the camera. Um, he's slated, he's currently developing a Jungle Book 2 and I thought he was going to direct that 
and the Lion King, it seems like it's all kind of the same. It's very similar. Um, now, uh, like I said, the Jungle Book, it's done pretty well for itself. It's got like $965.8 million globally. That's pretty close to that billion dollar mark. And uh, I'm sure they it did better than they even expected. Um, so naturally, using the same technology that was so successful with Jungle Book, they're going to move on to their other most popular or the most popular animal animated film, which is The Lion King. Um, you know, just a massive hit for Disney. I mean, the, the musical alone... Uh, has won six Tony Awards, um, or it won six Tony Awards in 1997, and its worldwide gross exceeds that of any film, show, or other entertainment title in box office history. And that's according to Disney, so who actually knows? Um, but, you know, it's The Lion King. The Lion King is actually my favorite animated Disney film. Mary Poppins is my favorite live action, and Toy Story is my favorite Pixar film. But I love it. It's it's a great, it's one of those, like, kind of perfect films for me. Um, I don't, it, it it's supposedly been fast tracked now too because John Favreau has been attached to it, but um, with no release date. But this is kind of the first adaptation that I feel a little weird about. Um, it's the first one that doesn't have a human centric character. There's no humans in the Lion King whatsoever. I mean, um, the Jungle Book was okay because it was like Mowgli. So when it said live action, I'm like, okay, well they're translating the human figure into real life, and then you know the animals around that. This one's just kind of. I don't understand how this one's going to be very different, especially if they're, it's the musical as well. So it's going to be just literally a live action version of The Lion King, music and all. I don't know that that's very good or that's going to be very interesting. It has me very nervous and um, I don't know. I mean, it's got perfect voice casting in it too. You can't be James Earl Jones as Mufasa. I know Rocket. Rocket agrees with me. Um, you can't beat James Earl Jones as Mufasa, Matthew Broderick, J- J- Jonathan Taylor Thomas as Simba. Um, it's just, it's, it, you know, um, uh, oh my goodness. Scar's voice is uh, Alfred from Batman vs. Superman. Jeremy Irons. I'm sorry. I have to talk out the roles and then the, the name comes to me. And I'm sorry that's the movie I went to. But he was amazing as Alfred. And I hope to see more of him in those films. But anyway... I don't know. That's that. That's my feelings on it. I'm very skeptical. I'm very not... Nothing about that announcement excites me at all. So you could be different. Um, let me know what you guys think. Um, next up, uh, we, I'm going to do... I'm going to do the one that was just announced. Um, Aladdin uh, has just been announced as being... A, getting the live-action remake treatment with Guy Ritchie and Talks to Direct. And for those of you who don't know, Guy Ritchie directed the 2011 Sherlock Holmes starring Robert Downey Jr. and Jude Law... And the 2000, oh, I'm sorry, the 2009 Sherlock Holmes, and then I believe it was 2011 was Sherlock Holmes, A Game of Shadows. And uh, that one had, uh, obviously, Robert Downey Jr., Sherlock Holmes, and both of them, Jude Laws, John Watson, and then the second one had Jared Harris as uh, uh, Moriarty. Uh, I like both of those films, and I look forward to a third one. I hope it's still in development. Last I heard it was. They're throwing around ideas. Um, it'd be nice. Uh this this uh, this version of Aladdin is going to be written by or was written by uh, the Big Fish screenwriter John August, and um, it's being produced by Dan Lin, who also produced the Lego Movie. Big fan of the Lego Movie, and he was the producer on the two Sherlock Holmes movies as well. Now, like I said, there's no release date and there's no word on what they're going to do about the genie. I'm assuming person with a lot of special effects. I mean, it's it's 2016 right now. I'm sure it'll look good, but I mean. How are we going to recast? You know, Robin Williams is the genie. Uh, I have heard wonderful things about the gentleman whose name is um, slipping my mind right now. Um, I'm going to look it up. The Aladdin genie on Broadway. I saw him I saw him perform the Oogie Boogie song at D23, and he was pretty incredible. James Monroe Eigelhart. And uh, he's I – lo- I'm, a, I'm a big fan of his. I'm a little embarrassed, actually. I forgot his name, to be honest with you. Um I think he's funny. He's got a great voice. Um, so who knows? Maybe he'll actually get land the role. That would be kind of cool. Um, but again, I'm assuming musical and uh, I don't know. I Again, this is another one where I'm like interesting because Aladdin – Guy Ritchie has a very distinct style. Like those – they're dark. They're not – not necessarily dark in nature, but they're visually kind of undersaturated, so it has that kind of uh, black and white ish tone to it. Um, but there, it's a very—he's got a very distinct style that 
I don't know. It'll be interesting to see how that's translated into Aladdin. Um, but Aladdin, I'm okay with getting the live action remake. I can see where they could go with in many different routes with that, and it would just be cool because again, that's a human centric story. Um, I lost my train of thought. I had something to say. Oh, it seems like Disney is definitely doing the grabbing at interesting directors too right now. So they chose they they went after Guy Ritchie, very distinct style. John Favreau, obviously uh, Iron Man, Elf, uh, stuff like that. We've got. Um, uh, oh my good sweet Bill Condon did Beauty and the Beast uh, you know him he did the last two Twilight movies and um, he also did a Sherlock Holmes movies with Ian McKellen that was actually really really good um, I forget the name of it right now it's it's fairly new I think it's only been out on Blu-ray for a short amount of time but um, Bill Condon and then my goodness there was another person but they were going for oh Kenneth Branagh Cinderella they're going for these very known people who have distinct looks and um it would be interested to see how Guy Ritchie translate into Aladdin um I'm op- I'm open minded about this one this one I'd like to see to be honest with you um so we're going to move on to the third and final one I'm going to talk about today which is Milan that's Mulan fa Mulan um so this one's been fast-tracked with a November 2nd, 2018 release. So that's only two years from now. Um, but this has gotten some attention in the last few days for not the right reason. So apparently a spec script for The Legend of Mulan um, surfaced um, where a white 30-something European trader falls for Mulan and decides to help the Chinese Imperial Army uh, to win her love. What? What what is that? What, come on, Disney. The the animated film is wonderful. It's I love that film. Um, it is a little weird that Donny Osmond is the voice of Li Shang, but he is wonderful as Li Shang, and he sings the best song in the movie. I'll make a man out of you. Um, this obviously has issues with the whitewashing controversy yet again, and it seems like Disney is a little bit on a roll with that at the moment after the whole Moana uh, Halloween costume situation, which you want to say like, oh, that's an accident, but then. I don't know, then this, I don't know. But that original spec script was written by Lauren Hynek and Elizabeth Martin um, and apparently was only ever purchased as, by Disney as a jumping off point. Um, so the studio has now enlisted the Rise of the Planet of the Apes and Jurassic World scribes Rick Jaffa and Amanda Silver to work on the scripts. Um, the Planet of the Apes films, the, new t- the two new ones, are phenomenal. Jurassic World was a lot of fun. Um, and now someone very close to the production has said that the spec script, to quote, the spec script was a jumping off point for a new take on the story that draws from both the literary ballad of Mulan and Disney's 1998 animated film. Mulan is and will always be the lead character in the story and all the primary roles, including the love interest, are Chinese. I really hope they don't get rid of the Lee, um, the Lee Shang character because he is my favorite. And honestly, I think Ming, <clears throat> excuse me. I think Ming-Na Wen should uh, still be Mulan. I know she's almost 53, but come on. She's Mulan. She was on ER, Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. I mean, that woman for me, she can do no wrong. She's amazing. Uh, I also know that Yoshi Sudarso um, is campaigning very heavily for the role of Li Shang, and I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be upset by this either. I very much enjoy him. I'm um, just throwing that out there. Um, if you don't know who that is, I'll let you IMDb it. I am not going to talk about it. Um, but... That's that's kind of it. Um, I kind of I guess uh, people have taken a Twitter with Mulan and they're using the hashtag Make Mulan Right, I believe it is, and um, kind of expressing their feelings toward the studio. So I'm sure the studio ah. knows they need to handle this with care. And I would be surprised that they wouldn't because th- th- I mean making friendly with Chinese film production companies is the current trend in Hollywood because I mean China is the number two film market in the world and I mean on, honestly start paying attention more and more to the films you're going to see in the theaters and the the logos at the beginning of the films you're, you you'll notice there's been a lot more um, Chinese film companies at the beginning and it's because they want to invest heavily in Hollywood films and so the whole idea is that we make these films that are successful in both film markets and I, I love the idea film is a collaborative effort um, and I love the idea that maybe we can start expanding our Hollywood blockbuster model into other um, markets and using their model as well. Um, you know, obviously we've seen the influence of Chinese pop culture films here um, and vice versa. And so that would be cool. And I, you know, where, where would American cinema be without French new wave cinema too? So obviously we need to kind of get back into that whole tumble effect of affecting each other. You know, it would be nice, nice to see that, especially in such an artistic 
realm and especially in a time when the mid-budget movie is disappearing more and more so it's the small micro budget film that you make on your own or it's the big budget hollywood film that's gonna make the millions and it's a scary time for art a scary time for the cinema goers who you you might just be not aware of it um but it's what happens when transformers do so well and um you know better films don't so uh, and you know I'm, I'm but I see both because I'm guilty of seeing Transformers I like Transformers um, <laughs> they don't agree with me I know I don't like them I should have said I, I enjoy them as like popcorn flakes I'm glad that I have my Corgis here to like really keep me in check for this episode but um, anyway that's that's all I have to say about Disney films um, so we're going to kind of keep our ear on that and see what it says um, what do you guys think let's weigh in uh, get in on it in the conversations down down there and um you know tweet at me uh Diz Pop show uh on all mediums or on the instagram the facebook i mean i'm terrible at keeping up on that facebook though because i honestly facebook more and more is becoming my least preferred social medium i don't it's just too much with everything going on it's just it's it's overwhelming um but i love i do i do i do 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 honestly love hearing from you guys and i love the input and i love to get dialogues and conversations going so let's hear your thoughts on this are there other um disney live action films maybe you know a little bit more about that i didn't cover um that we could talk about that'd be cool um so that's gonna do it for this episode so um again like i said this is one of the reasons why you want to be subscribed on iTunes. It's just a little bit of a surprise episode. And um, vice versa, you iTunes audio people, if you want, I'm sorry I'm not having episodes out on there, but sometimes, some weeks, it just doesn't work for you guys. And why would you want to listen to me describe how to do a uh, uh, face wound or cut or anything like that while you're driving in your car to work? And you can't see it. I would just be frustrated and annoyed by that. So... I try to keep all you guys in mind, and I hope it's working out, but um, that'll do it for me now. I will hopefully see you guys all later. Um, thank you for tuning in to this episode of Diz Pop. <laughs>